Hiya! Thanks for tuning in to another behind the scenes video. Today I'd like to show you all the secrets behind the daily puzzles in my mathematical logic game Make Nines. Specifically, how they're procedurally generated, or how they're put together by the code. In showing you this, I hope that you can learn something, and maybe find a solution for generating puzzles in your own games. Now a quick disclaimer, if you're an avid player of Make Nines, though I suspect you're not, knowing this magic might spoil the fun, so if that's you, well, I advise you probably don't watch this video. And if you don't know what Make Nines is, maybe watch one of the previous videos in this series. A quick bit about me first, I'm Ashley, indie developer known as Force of Habit. I'm trying to document more of my games and my experiences in game development, so if you would like to learn more about things related to that, or be inspired by things like that, then hit that subscribe button. So, let's get generating. First of all, there are three difficulties of puzzle, easy, medium and hard. For now, let's just say it affects the size of the puzzle. It does also affect some other things, but I'll get to that later. Puzzles in Make Nines are based around a grid of tiles. We'll need to fill up that grid with numbers and logic blocks. We start with a predefined template for the size of the puzzle. The game contains a bunch of templates for each size, and it selects one at random. The templates just say which tiles can be filled and which tiles should be left alone. Here are some examples. For a 4x4 grid, it might use this, this, or this. For a 6x6 grid, it might use this, this, or this. For an 8x8 grid, it might use this, this, or this. These templates mostly exist to make the level symmetrical, or to make them look nice. Now that these blocks are placed, the grid can be filled in. To kick this process off, the game starts an infinite loop. This sounds dangerous, but it just loops until the grid is completely filled. It knows when this happens because it tracks which tiles get filled. The loop contains a sequence of steps. First, it selects a random empty tile. With this tile, it calculates how far in each cardinal direction it can move, up to a max distance of 4. This just means how far it can move up, down, left or right. In this case, it can move up 4, left 3, right 2, and down 1. If all of these lengths were 0, this tile would be turned into a solid block, and the loop would be reset from the beginning. Next, with this data, it chooses to build a straight line, or a wonky line. It has about 75% chance of being a straight line. The straight line is simplest. A straight line selects a random direction, and fills it out as far as it can. In this case, let's go down. It can fill to a length of 1, so it places a pair. For example, a 4 and a 5, or an 8 and a 1. If it can fill to a length of 2, let's say we go right, it places 3 tiles, like a 3, a 4, and a 2. Hopefully, obviously, if it can fill to a length of 3, like when we go left, it places a full set of 4, for example, a 4, a 3, and 2 ones. Now for the wonky line. A wonky line starts the same as the straight line, but it diverges after one step. It selects a random direction, and holds that tile. Let's say it went up. It then performs the cardinal length calculation again off this tile. It repeats this step up to four times, creating Tetris-like shapes. If the line hits a wall, a block, or otherwise can't move, it stops. Once this is finished, it fills the numbers in, the same as the straight line. That's the end of the loop. All of the tiles on this iteration are added to the list of process tiles. This process repeats until the entire grid is filled. Here are a few more iterations as an example. The entire grid is now filled, but there are a few more steps to perform. The remaining steps depend on the puzzle difficulty that I mentioned in the beginning. First, it has to create the tile stacks. To do this, it finds certain tiles and divides them up. With easy and medium puzzles, it will find even numbered tiles and divide them in two. An 8 becomes two fours, a 6 becomes two threes, etc. With hard puzzles, it will try to find tiles divisible by three. A 6 becomes three twos, and a 3 becomes three ones. Easy puzzles will only generate one stack, whereas medium puzzles will generate up to four stacks, and hard puzzles up to seven stacks. You can see how this might spoil the magic as a player, right? You would know that stacks of fours always go with a neighbouring one, or stacks of ones with a neighbouring six. You can't say I didn't warn you. Anyway, that's it for stacks. The last thing the generator does is to try and create some of the special logic tiles, the ones which switch tiles around or can manipulate the grid in some way. If it's a medium puzzle, it will try to find a block tile and then convert it to an exchange or swap tile, performing the exchange by random chance. It will also try to create a slide tile in a similar way, 
and then try to move it back a few steps, because pressing the tile makes it move forward. The player will have to tap it a few times to put it in its correct or original place. Finally, if it's a hard puzzle, it will try to find any remaining block tiles and convert them to spin or rotation tiles. It will then perform the rotation action a few times just to add some extra confusion. And that's it! Now, I should acknowledge this algorithm is kind of bad, it could definitely be improved in many ways, but it works and it serves its purpose pretty well. Ideas for improvements are aplenty. It could generate the stacks as part of the number set generation rather than tack them out at the end. It could take into account and implement multiply and divide tiles and wildcard tiles. It could more thoughtfully place the logic tiles and things like that. But in reality, not enough people play or have played the game to justify making these changes. Sorry. I think that might be it for behind the scenes on Make Nines. End of an era, or just a series. Let me know what you want to see for the next video down below in the comments. If you're watching this as it's released, there's a poll over on my Patreon where you can vote on what comes next. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, etc. Subscribe, yada yada, all that jazz. Yeah, that's it. Catch you later. Bye!